Have you ever wondered what makes us alive? Stop and think about it for a second. Maybe it's the beating of our hearts. Or the breathing of our lungs. Without those, we couldn't live, right? Well, you could survive with a mechanical heart or even bionic lungs. But what really makes you, you, is your brain and your nervous system. In today's lesson, we'll begin our unit on body systems as we describe how cells are organized in living things, explain the purpose and structure of the nervous system, and summarize best practices for keeping the nervous system healthy. Let's get into it. In our last unit, we learned about the diversity of life and how living things are categorized by scientists. One way scientists classify organisms is the structure of their cells. Most animals have specialized groups of cells called tissues. Tissues combine to create organs, and organs come together to create organ systems. When these organ systems are put together, the result is a fully functioning organism. For the purposes of this unit, We'll be focusing on human organ systems, which are extremely similar to other chordates, or animals with a spinal cord. In this lesson specifically, we'll be looking at the nervous system. The nervous system is the body system that transmits electrical signals and acts as your body's command center. Your brain processes and responds to information, and your spinal cord connects your brain to the rest of your body. Together, they make up the central nervous system. Your peripheral nervous system, on the other hand, includes all parts of the nervous system that are not the brain or spinal cord and are responsible for transmitting signals only. Some examples are the nerves in your hands or feet. The nervous system is made out of specialized cells called neurons, which send electrical communication signals throughout the body. Neurons combine to create nervous tissues, which combine to create larger nerves. These nerves act as highways for electrical communication signals. When one neuron receives a signal, it relays that signal to its neighbor, which then relays the signal to their neighbor, and so on and so forth, until the signal reaches their final destination. You can think of this as neurons playing telephone at an incredibly fast pace to relay information. It's important to keep in mind, however, that neurons can only send signals in one direction, toward the brain or away from it. For example, with the sensory nervous system, you receive signals from your five senses, sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch, and they are sent directly to your brain, which enables you to better understand the world around you. Your brain doesn't normally send signals to your senses. For example, you can't tell your arm to feel something that isn't there. On the other hand, there are neurons that only send signals away from your central nervous system and out to the rest of your body. Some of these signals are voluntary, or controlled by you and others are not. Your motor system, for example, is voluntary and consists of neurons that send signals away from your brain and toward your skeletal muscles. If you want to pick up your pencil, your brain sends a signal to your spinal cord, which then travels down your arm and tells your muscles to pick up the pencil. For the most part, you have control over these signals. The main exception to this is something called a reflex. A reflex is an involuntary action taken in response to a stimulus. For example, if you accidentally touch a hot stove, your central nervous system does not give you time to think, oh, that's hot, I'd better remove my hand. Instead, it immediately activates your motor system before you can think about it and pulls your hand away. Can you think of some other examples of reflexes? Write your ideas in your guided notes. Did you come up with any? Some other examples are the startle reflex, when there is an unexpected motion or noise, and the knee jerk reflex, which is typically tested at the doctor's office on routine checkups. Okay, so with some exceptions, your motor system is largely under your control. However, there are signals that your brain sends to your body that you are not consciously aware of. These signals are sent by your autonomic nervous system. This system regulates involuntary actions, such as heart rate, digestion, and even breathing. You can think of this as autonomic, meaning automatic or autopilot. 
Can you imagine having to constantly tell your lungs to breathe or your heart to beat? That would be really annoying. So this system takes care of these things for you. Our brain takes care of our entire body, so it's incredibly important that we take excellent care of our brain and the rest of our nervous system. One of the most effective ways to do this is to get plenty of sleep. I know, I know, there's a lot of sayings out there like sleep is for the weak, but that could not be further from the truth. Sleep is like quality time for your brain. It repairs itself, catalogs all of the things you learned while you were awake, and most importantly, it gets a much needed break from the grind of day-to-day -day life. There are so many bad things that are linked to sleep deprivation. Heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, obesity, depression, and risk of injury, to name a few. It is recommended that teenagers get a minimum of 8 hours of sleep per day, but 9 or 10 is even better. Another way to help out your nervous system is to lower your stress levels. This is easier said than done because life can get really hectic, but it's important to take at least some time to yourself. This will help you avoid burnout and keep your brain healthy in the long run. Some helpful activities are exercising regularly and engaging in hobbies, creating meaningful connections with others, and practicing guided meditation. Finally, you'll want to make sure that you're consuming a healthy diet that includes vitamin B12, vitamin D, and healthy fats. This will help your brain build new connections and recover more quickly. And with that, we've wrapped up our lesson on the nervous system. We've learned that the nervous system is the command center of your body that communicates through electrical signals. Your central nervous system consists of your brain and spinal cord, which relay commands and receive signals from your peripheral nervous system. The cells of your nervous system are called neurons, and they interconnect to form nerves. Your sensory nervous system sends signals connected to your five senses to your brain, and your motor system sends signals from your brain to your skeletal muscles. Meanwhile, your autonomic nervous system regulates functions like breathing and heart rate without your conscious awareness. Finally, you can help keep your nervous system healthy by getting plenty of sleep, reducing stress, and eating a healthy diet. In our next lesson, we'll be taking a look at another important system within the body, the respiratory system. Until then, I'm Anthony, and remember, life is full of wonders, so keep learning and don't ever stop wondering. Hey!